Islamabad, Pakistan, is where we'll find our next presented. His focus on long-term development projects that assist provinces in Pakistan that are threatened by extreme weather. Please welcome Asif Iqbal. Last year, I'm sure you all remember the huge flood which Pakistan was affected by last year. The whole country was affected so badly. You can see the map and understand in the red regions the extent of the devastation and 20 million people affected so badly by the flood and destabilization in their lives. Let's ask this question as to why we are getting all this heavy flooding and rainfall fall in these areas. Scientists attribute the main reason that global warming is the contributing factor to this increased uh, incidence of extreme weather. We really know that we have to produce the change that is absolutely necessary now. We do have solutions at hand. In Chimpir, Pakistan, we are working on building more windmills, solar water heaters in Turkey, our solar power station in Pakistan, which is a very good news. If we had more forests last year, perhaps we could have uh, averted that kind of devastation with our flooding last year. Please welcome Philippe Cousteau, explorer and environmental advocate. Dean Bill Starling from the College of Air and Mineral Science at Penn State. Eugene Cordero, Associate Professor in the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science at San Jose University. And Reverend Lennox Yearwood, the President and CEO of Hip Hop Caucus. So many of the people that are being impacted by uh, climate change are largely outside yes. the public view, or at least the view of the Western world. And, um, and, and that s tends to lead us to think that nothing is really yes. happening. There's an irony there that a lot of the, the, the individuals that are going to be so affected in the equatorial region specifically for, from climate change are oftentimes the least carbon polluters in the world. Who is contributing the most to the, the total emissions? If you look at historical greenhouse gas emissions, the United States is the largest contributor to that yes. whole pie. And uh, so then you would, it would make sense the United States would be one of the early adopters yes. of moving over into a, a cleaner um, type of energy. And being from Louisiana you know, and having gone through with Katrina yes. um, uh, and having talked to the people, there's nothing worse and then dying in a flood. And so what happened in Pakistan with, the, with that catastrophic flooding, um, I can just empathize with that and just feel with the thousands who died Absolutely. because of that flooding and then the millions who were displaced because of this reality. Today, nearly 20% of, of the Pakistani population is, um, is classified by the UN as being malnourished yes. in, to some extent. And that is uh, about 5% more than what the UN typically refers to as a disaster situation. So food security is really a major uh, problem for the Pakistanis as they began to try to rebuild mm -hmm. from this uh, devastating mm -hmm. flood. The deniers seem to have so much money. Do you really think there is something we can do to win this debate? As scientists, we, and as educators, we believe in truth. Yes. And so, and, and this has been kind of a mantra is that, that in science, we work in, in data and numbers and models, and we have a very systematic way of doing things. Yes. And, uh, and we have to believe that ultimately, that we are all seeking, seeking the truth. But for that next generation who will have to live with this, your boy, my boy, our children, uh, we're fighting for them.